Welcome back uh, fellow coders. Now that our uh, ESP32 is uh, happily connected to the Wi-Fi, now let's talk about how to send data via Wi-Fi. So we are already done with the Wi-Fi connection. We are now going to send sending data. So uh, via Wi-Fi. Now sending data over Wi-Fi is going to you know, uh, change the entire possibilities of what projects we can create in uh, with IoT and embedded uh, systems. Uh, whether you're collecting sensor data, controlling devices remotely or creating uh, interactive applications, the ability to transmit uh, information wirelessly is at a core and that is what makes the ESP32 uh, so powerful. Now let's uh, take a step further and uh, go ahead. So before that, I would like to tell you that most of the parts or tutorials could be found at electronicsimplified.in. And uh, today we'll be needing the libraries uh, for the ESP asynchronous web server. This is the link uh, is also going to be provided in the description. So you can actually utilize that and the link is going to redirect you to this uh, github repository uh, download the zip file and after downloading it uh, you could actually go and add it into your add the zip library go to the desktop just locate wherever the file is located now I have two libraries here that's fine uh, I'm just going to select one of these let's click on open um, I'd like to tell you that I already added this library before and uh, now I'm going to make changes to the previous code where we had already connected uh, ESP32 to the Wi-Fi in case if you haven't done this code before then you can just hop on to my previous video and then come back to this one now here I'm going to include uh, the next library that we need that is ESP asynchronous async web server dot it after that uh, we are going to create uh, a, a server instance uh, asynchronous web server so, um, and you can mention the port here I'm gonna stick with 80 then we have almost everything to all right here we are just going to send we are just going to say server dot on and we are gonna basically uh, send a request and uh, to the this is going to be the route this is where uh, the route from where the path begins from where our server is going to access this information from uh, it could be something like you know uh, public uh, slash uh, it could be uh, a page where it is located what direct what, what directory it is uh, located at so basically we are accessing the root directory here then uh, we will be writing the type of request so http underscore get http here uh, it specifies the type of request that the handler will respond to uh, in this case uh, it's basically to retrieve data from the server so after that uh, we are going to use a, a lambda function let's call this a synchronous web server request pointer to request So in this, this is going to be a lambda function here, request, it's an anonymous 
lambda function where we'll be sending this is the code 200 is basically the status code indicating a success response like it's okay that we have connected okay so it basically tells that the client and the server are connected to each other that's the server response then it's basically going to tell in what uh, format it is now if you are not familiar with uh, html um, i will be teaching you the most basic tag but in case if you are quite familiar with html then uh, i think that's uh, that's a good sign all right so moving on uh, after the type uh, we are going to just type a very basic html tag h1 here refers to the the header and we need to use the close html tag and in this you can just write whatever you want like i'm just going to say hello es then save this file so now so far everything is in the void setup which means that it is going to be just be done once now let's uh, upload this code so i'm going to hit upload it's going to take a while since it's going to compile first i'm quite uh, there could be many errors that you would encounter so again as you can see that it still says that asynchronous web server is not has not been declared so if you can spot it you could mention to me in the comments if you if you realize this in the first call i would want you to uh, mention it in the comment uh, but ultimately i am here to help you and make your uh, simplify your content so i will tell you that server uh, dot on and this is the route here this is the type of request then this is basically the instance asynchronous uh, web server request and it's pointing to the request and the lambda function that is there it's uh, sending with a with a status code the type of file and what exactly is the data here so when most of the things are gone we have still not written one part or the most important which says web server begin now web server begin and serial dot begin uh, are kind of familiar uh, they, they are basically the one they are, they are, they are the functions which actually allow uh, communication to be initiated so for serial.begin it is uh, initially uh, normally for the serial communication between the computer and the microcontroller and server.begin is uh, for basically uh, microcontrollers that will connect uh, wirelessly to one another. So since this ID does not support uh, any sort of uh, scope solutions so that it makes it a little more difficult for the, the errors to be decoded. So alright we have uh, the data being writing onto the ESP32 so I hope that uh, it establishes the connection with ease and we do not have any problems. So finally as you can see that we are expecting hello simplify to be displayed onto the web server now now when we open the serial monitor and once i open the serial monitor i'm going to press the enable button seeing connected very quickly and this is connected to wi-fi now how and where am i actually supposed to check for the uh, check for the web server so 
in order to know that we are also going to uh, print uh, the Wi-Fi local IP so we'll say serial dot print ln and we are going to print the Wi-Fi dot local IP so on printing this uh, we will be getting the local uh, IP of the ESP32 so that we can access this via the network now make sure that your computer uh, and the ESP32 are on the same network so I'm going to switch my network and stay on the right network. The name of the network is eSimplified, so I'm connecting to eSimplified, and you know the credentials. So let the code upload in the background as I connect to this network. So as you can see, uh, it's writing the code onto the ESP32 and um, what we basically expect is that uh, we'll, we'll open the browser and navigate to the IP address assigned to the ESP32 and uh, get the most awaited information that is just saying hello to uh, hello simplified on the web server so let's open a browser page and we do not know the IP still so looks like this is the IP um, I know that it would have been better if we had to print put it on a new line here so that this IP would be pasted on a new line which makes it a lot more easier to read I'm just going to paste it here and try to access it right now it just says hello simplified now let's uh, dwell into handling the HTTP request now we want our ESP32 to, I mean ESP32 to, to respond differently to get and post request now get is to get information from the server and post is to send data to the server so this is what makes it very crucial for the uh, building interactive web application so we'll just change this request uh, so after this is done we'll try and send another request so let's say server at on and again onto the same route and here we are going to say http underscore post and basically what you could do is just copy this entire code and paste it makes it a lot more simpler and instead of get you could just type here post now what you got to change is uh, we need to write the handling of the post request and we will add more code here So I don't want to do this uh, right now, right away, um, in this part of the video segment. We'll be looking into this uh, in the next segment where I will be very specific about the post request because that is what makes our uh, application more interactive. So here, um, just say it's going to be just text and plain and just type in here post request received so let's uh, try to 
we'll explore more advanced uh, Wi-Fi uh, functionalities. Uh, so if you found this helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to this channel. And I'll catch you in the next one. So this is how the code is anyway is going to upload and we will be able to see the same basic web server so if if you if you if you've been still here looking up uh, at the code being uploaded uh, make sure that you actually go to the next video uh, in which I'm going to talk about uh, task automation uh, where we'll be using the simple timer library and we will be uh, programming our first uh, LED uh, and it's going to be made with uh, a different environment which will be uh, considered as automation and since now uh, we are here I'll paste this into browser hit enter and so far we'll just see the web server working the same way and the post request since it's a plain text we'll see how to find that in the next video